What's doing, everybody? I'm Alec Lace. Thank you for watching First Class Fatherhood. Today's guest on the podcast is 14-time New York Times best-selling author Brad Taylor. Brad has got a brand new book out titled American Trader. You can find the link to the book down in the description below. Brad is also a U.S. veteran who served for more than two decades, including time with the Special Forces Elite Unit, Delta Force. It's a big honor to have him back on the podcast. This is Brad's second visit. So go down there, smack the subscribe button, tap the like, and let's jump into it right now with Brad Taylor on First Class Fatherhood. Joining me now, First Class Father, Brad Taylor. Welcome back to First Class Fatherhood. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's get a little update here. How old are the girls now? How are they doing? Uh, the girls are uh, uh, pretty much adults now. So one of them's uh, about to start uh, um, nursing school. She's still living at home. She just graduated from Auburn. She's starting nursing school. The other one just started college, which for 2020 has been an absolute mess. So we weren't even sure if she was. she's going to Alabama. And we weren't even sure if she was going to get down there. And then when we got down there, you know, you had everything was just chaotic. What is she going to do here? How is she going to do this? Is it all online? Is it not online? They changed the rules by the day. And um, she just came home for the Thanksgiving break and just showed back up and nothing's changed. Her room's now a disaster and she's moved right in. <laughs> yeah, it's like that over here. I got four kids. The oldest is just starting high school, but they're all home here. It's kind of like a mess with this online learning. Everyone's yeah. taxing everyone's really using up the Wi-Fi. It's uh, everyone's trying to connect yeah. at the same time. It's it's really uh, it's been an interesting uh, school year for sure. Well, one thing I didn't know was uh, uh, apparently I have a bandwidth issue. That, I mean, there's a limit to how much bandwidth I can take, which I've never, ever used. And then they cut us off. And I'm like, why did you cut us off for you? We used too much of your bandwidth. I'm like, that's a thing. It's because yeah. of all the online stuff. Yeah. Yeah. N n data has never become more important than it has right. this year. You got to up them data plans. Uh, Brad, if you could, just for a few people here, uh, j just take a minute to hit my listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Uh, so, well, I'm a, I'm a writer now. I, I guess I could say that now. I used to be embarrassed to say it, but uh, I uh, served most of my time for 22 years in the United States military, most of that in special operations. And uh, my final assignment, I was teaching at the Citadel uh, here in Charleston. And I wrote a book because it was kind of a, a bucket list thing of mine. And then um, it sold. And I had to make a decision. Do I stay in the military? Do I try to be a writer? Or what am I doing? And so I uh, retired, turned out promotion, retired, and started writing books. Yeah, awesome. And thanks for your service, Brad. And keeping it to you as a dad here for a minute, what would you say were some of the top values that you hoped to instill in your girls as they were growing up? Resilience. I think the top one would be resilience. Because there's been so many times in my life where uh, things have not gone my way where I had to bounce back and do it again and do it again and do it again. Uh, and every time that uh, somebody would say no, I would say, well, okay, he said no, but maybe I'm doing it again. I'm going again. And I think that's the biggest thing that, uh, the, uh, I can't remember who the author was. It said it, that you know, you can have, you can be a genius or a genius all over the world. You can have uh, talent. There's plenty of people with talent have nothing, but a force of will is what, succeeds that's what it is if i could engender in them resilience would be the main thing yeah very well said brad uh what, what what kind of just because of your military background here what what kind of advice would you have for parents out there whose kids are just getting ready now to enter the military or they're just considering joining up what kind of advice would you give to the parents uh, for the kid who's just on the onset of a military career i actually would say that that's a good idea <laughs> in fact i'm trying to my older daughter that's going to uh is start nursing school i'm trying to get her to I mean, the military will pay for it. Get her to go in the military and do it. Um, the military is, it's an a underused resource. And I say that having been in it. It's an underused resource of um, just about everything. I mean, you, you know, obviously you get the, the, the baseline stuff. You get your medical, you get a paycheck and that kind of stuff. Uh, but you learn so much about it. I, I, if somebody was going to join the military, my advice to them would be let them go. They'll get something out of it. Whether they say four years or 40, they're going to get something out of it. Yeah, good stuff. And, and you know, I'm curious, you as a writer here now, um, writing for the female roles can, I would imagine, be kind of difficult to do. And you live, obviously, with your wife, two daughters. Do they ever get into, like, how do you write for the female roles in your book? And do you ever get, like, criticism from your wife and your girls oh, yeah. say, hey, that's not how the girls would be doing this? Oh, yeah. And so when I first started writing uh, One Rough Man, my first book, which was, what, 15 books ago, um, I – really struggled with that. And, and not so much my wife, but I had a lot of uh, female friends from the military that were first readers. And uh, so I'd give them the book and they'd say, uh, um, 
you know, she's a crybaby. What are you doing? That's just wimpy stuff. You know, fix it. So I'd fix it. And then they'd come back and say, well, she's not a guy. She's not going to do that. Fix it. And so we, I had to go back and forth and back and forth. And it was really difficult to capture a female voice. Uh, I mean, eventually I, I got into a rhythm with it. And so uh, now when they read them, they're like, okay, you caught her. All right, Jennifer's doing good. Okay, she's not a baby, but she's not a man. So they enjoy yeah. it now. You got to get the approval. And you got the new one now, uh, American Trader, that drops here. It's another Pike Logan in the series here. What can you tell the listeners about that? What can they expect to see in the book? Yeah, it's about the uh, um, it's basically about Chinese uh, encroachment inside the South China Sea, inside the uh, trying to take over Taiwan, uh, which they definitely want to do. And uh, I, the germ of this idea actually came from Operator Down three books ago. I was in Lesotho, Africa, doing research, and um, uh, it was about a coup. So I had to see the apartment buildings and all these other buildings, uh, you know, the radio station, what I was going to take over for Africa. And I, they had these brand new government buildings. They were all brand new, and they all had Chinese lettering on them, which I assume said something like, you know, wear a hard hat. And I asked the guy I was with, I was like, what, what's all the Chinese stuff here? Oh, they're building those for us. And I said, why? Well, they're just trying to be nice. And I was like, hmm, they're not being nice. They're doing it for a reason. And that's their Belt and Road Initiative, which is going all over the world. It's my first taste of it. It didn't bother me back then. It had nothing to do with the book I was writing. Well, since then, it's gotten more and more huge. And then they've taken over the Spratly Islands. They're doing all kinds of crazy stuff in Australia, in the America. I mean, they just had a New York City police officer who was arrested because – he was uh, um, surveilling Tibetan refugees for the Chinese. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, I saw that. They, and they do it all over the world. And so I, that's, I said, that's enough for a story. And so I, that's basically what I do. It's kind of an artificial intelligence uh, war games type thing taking over Taiwan is what the book's about. Yeah, wow. Very cool, Brad. Yeah, and I'm definitely going to drop a link in the description of the podcast episode so my listeners can tap the, the link and get over there to, to get themselves a copy. Now, obviously, the coronavirus has changed the way everybody has done everything here. Yeah. What is it as far, as far as you with the book dropping now? Is that changing the way you do your usual book signings, the book tours? Yeah. How is that going to impact the, the drop of this new book here? It's a, Basically, it's destroyed it. Uh, in fact, writing the book was uh, when coronavirus hit and people would say that, you know, oh, you're locked in the house all day. It'd be great to write a book. And uh, I, actually, it was horrible because I'm like, I, I, I went to Taiwan. I went to Australia. We did all the research. And then the coronavirus hit. And I'm like, well, how, I don't know what's going on in Taiwan right now. They're all locked in a house. Not to mention I was locked in my house and I was hating every minute of it. Uh, so I'm not doing a book tour. Uh, it's all going to be virtual. I'm not doing basically anything because you can't go anywhere. There's nowhere you can fly to. Nobody. I mean, I was supposed to be in Croatia a month ago for the next book, not this book, but the next book, uh, doing research. And uh, then, you know, coronavirus turned into a volcano over there. And I'm like, well, if I get over there and everything's closed, that's not worth it. And number two, suppose I get over there and America says you can't come home. Sorry, you're in coronavirus land. So coronavirus has really been horrific. Yeah, it's definitely taking a toll on everybody here. And I, I'm curious to ask you here, Brad, just because, like I said, my oldest is in high school here, and he's about to be introduced to all these um, things that are coming his way in high school, such as driving, drugs, and all this other stuff. Yeah. You've gotten two girls through all this stuff. How did you kind of – now, a lot of places uh, – I'm in New Jersey here. They just passed uh, legalized marijuana here in this state, <laughs> so now it's recreational. I know certain states have decriminalized uh, coke and meth and all this other stuff, which is just bizarre to see. How did you kind of handle it? As they would go. Sure, you're aware. I mean, it starts out much earlier in high school. You just beat them in the head on a daily basis. I mean, on a daily basis. You don't do this. You don't do this. You don't do this. This is not us. This is not us. And a supportive environment. You're constantly supporting them what they're going to do. Uh, and when they fail, well, I'd say fail. But I mean, I went to high school. I drank some beers. So you know, when they do that, I actually kind of one of my proudest achievements. My youngest one that just went to Alabama um, came home and bragged about having a fake ID. I'm like, well, if she thinks she can talk to me about having a fake ID, I did something right. So she's, <laughs> she thinks she's, you know, just telling me something. But I, I know that, that if, that's, that's, if that's the worst thing she's going to do, then okay, that's the worst thing she's going to do. And just it, pounding in them day after day after day after day. Uh, you can't wake up one morning and say, I don't want you to do drugs. It, it's got to start from the ground up all the way through. Yeah, that's good stuff. And I'm hoping that my kids will be at least honest with me when it comes to these things. And one of the most encouraging things, Brad, is, I mean, I drive a lot of Uber on the weekends and stuff, and it's encouraging that the college kids 
aren't drinking and driving the way they were when yeah. I was going to school. That's the truth. Uh, <laughs> but one of the things is that they, they do kind of trust the technology so much that sometimes these girls will get right into my car and they won't even ask who I am. So yeah. uh, like, I know you have the girls that are going away to school. I know coronavirus has changed a little bit, but do you have Uber accounts for the girls so they can yeah, get in I tell you, that's, we, But I've given them a list of, you know, if you're going to get in this car, here's what you do. You match the license plate. You match the picture. You do this. You do that. And that's not so much because I'm a genius. It's because in Columbia, South Carolina, uh, a year and a half ago, a girl got in the car and got her head cut off. And I was shocked to see it. And I was like, okay, that's never going to happen here. If you're getting a Lyft or Uber, here's what you're going to do before you get in that Lyft or Uber. And if somebody, if one of your friends orders that Lyft or Uber, I don't care. You're still matching that shit. Don't get in the vehicle unless this matches. And like I say, it's not because I'm a genius. It's because somebody got killed in Columbia just up the road from my house, got in the wrong car and ended up getting murdered. Yeah, I remember the story. And it just so happened like a couple of weeks after that had happened, all of a sudden, everybody for like a week or two was checking the license plates. And they were yeah. like all talking about that story. And it became but then as everything else, as time went on, it just all went out the window once again. So um, it, getting it back into the book here, real uh, uh, American Trader, is it going to be available on uh, the ebook, the audio book, everything else oh, like yeah. that? Has any of that changed because of the coronavirus or you still been able to bang out all the different formats? No, no. The formats are all still coming out. In fact, you still got the same reader. Rich uh, Orlo will do the audio book. And uh, he's actually just sent me some questions the other day. Uh, how do I pronounce this? What kind of acronym is that type stuff? So I walk him through that stuff. Uh, but no, it's all tracking. Uh, are either of your girls interested in a writing career? Do they write themselves or is that uh, neither my one of them? Younger, my younger daughter does, but not neither one of her writing. My older daughter is, is in the medical field, so she's really into medicine. But uh, my younger daughter, she, she kind of tinkers around with it. She won't admit it, but I think she does. <laughs> And you said you were planning a trip there to Croatia that got canceled here. What, is that a little hint into what the, the next book following this book is going to be about? You got any inside skinny for us here? <laughs> yeah, no, not yet. It's, I'm actually behind on that one, too, because <laughs> of this damn coronavirus. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's about uh, – there's a group called the Knights of Malta, the Knights of Jerusalem of Malta that uh, – Wow, from the Maltese Falcon. To, from the Catholic. They've <laughs> been around forever, and they're, they're treated like a state, but they have no land. And it's kind of a unique organization, so I'm kind of digging into them. Yeah, I think that was like the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem or something like that, exactly. right? That's him, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty pretty cool. All right, well, obviously, you got the new book dropping here. You've had a lot of success with the Pike Logan series. You have. What are your plans or goals for the future? you have any plans on creating any new series, any other books that, that'll uh, diverge away from the Pike Logan? Or are you gonna, is the plan to stick with him, maybe build it I into say, a TV series? I'd say right now I'm, I'm sticking with Pike Logan just because, uh, I, I mean, I enjoy writing him. It's fun. Uh, I, I might do, I've been asked several times, will I do a spinoff of the Aaron and Shoshana? Will they go off in their own series? Will Knuckles have his own book? And that's always in the back of my head. But right now I got enough of my hands full just writing with Pike. So. Wow. Very cool. All right. Uh, again, like I said, the link to, uh, in the, to uh, America Trader will be in the description of today's podcast episode. So my listeners can tap and get over there and get a copy. Last thing I'm going to hit you with here, Brad, I always love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast, your second go around. So I'm curious, what type of advice do you have? for that new dad or for that about to be father who's out there listening. <laughs> Probably the same thing I said last year is that don't let your wife do everything. I mean, if you're the new dad, you better buckle down and start helping out because it only goes so far because when, when, the, when the wife breaks down, which will happen sooner or later, if you do nothing, you need to step in there, man. You're the man. Get in there and step in there. Change the diapers. Help them do everything that can happen. Yeah, right on with that. All right, this has been an honor for me. Uh, Brad Taylor, it's been great to have you back. Best of luck with the new book. You're a first-class father all the way, and thank you for giving me a few minutes of your time here on First Class Fatherhood. Thank you. Thank you for having me.